Hi, everyone. Welcome to the How to Have a Healthy Voice Masterclass. I am so glad you're here. This is really, really exciting. Um, oh, you guys can't hear me. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I assume you can. That, okay, big yes. Great. Um, I'm just going to double check that it's coming through. My good mic. Oh, you guys are very reliable. Thank you for all the yeses. Amazing. Okay. I made myself some notes. We did press record so everyone can watch this afterwards. All right. So while we're assembling, I actually, Zoom webinars allow us to do something pretty cool, which is a poll. So I'm going to launch this poll. It's quite simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch it. It's going to pop up on your screen if you're on a computer. Go ahead and let us know what continent you are on. I will be very excited if today is the first day we have someone from Antarctica. Let's see if it happens. And check all that apply for do you practice? And I tried to think of everyone in my community, like the kind of big categories, singing, acting, public speaking, teaching, vocal coaching, speech therapy, another medical prof profession, entrepreneurship, law, business. You can also type in the chat box if you want where exactly you are and what exactly you do, especially if I left something off. So I'm gonna keep this poll open for a couple more seconds. There are nearly 500 people on the line right now, just so you know, and 4,000 people signed up for this masterclass, which is astonishing. I have never had such an easy time inviting people to a masterclass in my entire career. I think we are all really ready to talk about our voices. I'm so happy. Okay, counting down five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna end the poll. Okay, so makes sense. The largest representation that we have here on the masterclass is North America. 64% of us are there, 29% in Europe. Tried to do this at a good time of day for you guys in Europe as well. 3% in South America, 2% in Asia. Oh my gosh, is some, did someone check Antarctica as a joke? Is this for real? I would be so excited. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, okay, I knew it. I, someone said in the chat box, <laughs> box is someone, it, the day someone is in Antarctica, I'll be very excited. Okay, a lot of us are singers. 64% of us are singers. 28% of us are actors. 37% are teachers. That's another really big representation. Let me see if I can go in order. 24% do public speaking. I bet there will be more of you by the end of this, I hope. 13% are entrepreneurs. 14% are in business. Amazing. Voiceover artists. I did leave out voiceover artists as a specific category. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Well, it is amazing to know who we are. And just to keep, a, um, just to keep an ongoing tab, uh, there are almost 540 people on the line right now. Can you guys feel the energy? We're gonna actually tap into the energy of being with each other. I was thinking as I was meditating over the last couple of days and thinking about all of you tuning in, I was thinking about what a web we're creating around the planet and how we are going to really spread this beautiful energy around being present with our voices. So, okay. Let me just do a couple little housekeeping things. The first of which is obviously to introduce myself if we haven't met yet. Hello, my name is Alyssa Weinzimmer. I'm a vocal health educator, a presence coach, and the founder of Voice Body Connection. The other person on the line who will be very helpful to you is Christian Ty Edwards, who is the Voice Body Connection community manager. So please, um, if you have any trouble, you can always private chat Christian. He's also keeping an eye on our inbox. Um, so that everything hopefully goes super smoothly. We're just going to pray to the internet gods for things to be very smooth today. So far, so good. Um, so just to situate you in time and space, it is indeed January 27th, 2021. I've been looking forward to this day for a while. And so we've made it to 2021. Across the globe, no matter where you are, I'm sure you've had an interesting past year. If you were with me at this time last year for the uh, free masterclass last year, I do these annually, these vocal health masterclasses. I was in a very different place back then. You were probably in a very different place back then. And here we are today. So let's see. The purpose of this masterclass is that I want to help you understand how your voice works 
like a car, right? We understand a car so we can work on a car. I want you to understand how your voice works as an instrument so that you can use it better and keep it healthy, free, and strong. So today we're gonna to cover daily practices to prevent vocal issues and keep your voice healthy. We're gonna talk about restorative techniques that you can do when you have overused or strained your voice. We're gonna talk about practical exercises that will build your vocal strength and that includes having breath support. And to do so, we're gonna go through really a journey of our human bodies. As I was preparing for today, I realized I wanna teach you everything, but we're specifically going to focus on starting at the cellular level of our body and then building in breath support, understanding how the vocal folds, the vocal cords work. Those are interchangeable terms, if you're not familiar with that. Vocal folds is the official scientific term and vocal cords is often what we say in everyday jargon. Um, we're also going to talk about how to reduce tension in our vocal tract. Vocal tract is a fancy way of saying the tube through which your voice flows. So, and today especially, I want to say that we're going to focus on the jaw and the tongue, which are common, very big culprits for people in terms of vocal tension. Now, a couple other things to note. I'm just going to cross my, uh, my legs here while I say this to you. We'll do about an hour of curriculum, and then the final 20 to 30 minutes is going to be left for the Q&A. If you do have questions that you think of while I'm teaching today, feel free. There's actually a really cool little feature here. Someone already found it. Perfect. There's a Q&A feature on the webinar where you can put a question in the Q&A section. Do that, and then it'll be really easy when Christian is helping us later on in the masterclass to uh, see what everyone put in the Q&A box. So if you think of something, just queue it up in there. And let's see, what else did I want to tell you? So I will get through as much as I can today. I've got a lot of stuff planned, but the truth is that this how to have a healthy voice question is a very big topic. So if you find yourself wanting to know more in any of the areas that we go into, like I said, we'll talk about embodiment, we'll talk about breath support, we'll talk about tension release. If you wanna learn more in any of these categories, then I have good news for you, you don't have to worry. This masterclass is actually an introduction to my annual 20 week course called Release Your Voice. And it starts exactly at this time next week. That's the reason we're doing, doing this at this time now, pardon me. So if you stick around um, later on in this first hour, I'll talk to you about what Release Your Voice class is and how it works. So that if you wanna go really deeply into opening up and freeing your voice in 2021, if that's a big priority for you, you'll have a lot of support from this community and me to do that. Okay, so we're gonna dive in. I want to share a little bit more about my personal story. Um, so, as I said, my name is Alyssa Weinzimmer, and I'm a vocal health educator, a presence coach, the founder of Voice Body Connection. I've actually been doing this for almost exactly a decade this month. I have a feeling the thing will pop up on LinkedIn saying, congratulations, you have an anniversary. I started Voice Body Connection in 2011. And learning and sharing about the human voice is really my purpose in life. It's, it's very much what my life has been about. And <clears throat> I thought it would be fun to tell you something kind of personal. I think my vocal folds got a little phlegm on them in that moment because I was like, ooh, this is a little bit vulnerable. So about two weeks ago, I was having an Akashic Records reading. Does anyone, I'm gonna peek at the chat box so that you guys can tell me, does anyone know what an Akashic Records reading is? Yeah. So for those of you that don't know what the Akashic Records are, <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay. I got some hippie spiritual people along with me on the line. Okay. The Akashic records are thought of as a compendium of everything that has ever happened in the entire universe. And my friend Tilly offered me an Akashic records reading and I was like, yeah, girl, I will totally do that. So we were having an Akashic records reading. She opened my records, which is what you say when you're starting the reading. And immediately, the first thing that she said to me is, your throat is blocked. And I don't think I said it out loud, but in that moment, I was like, mm, tell me something I don't know, <laughs> right? My life has been about the voice because my throat has been blocked. So I've been thinking about it since then. And I thought this was a fun thing to share with you guys because really, I think a lot of our throats are blocked. In fact, I think this might be the story 
of this moment on the planet for a lot of us. Let me explain what I mean. So if you're not familiar with the chakra system in yoga, there are seven chakras. They're like wheels or vortices of energy along the central channel of our body. And the first chakra is down in our root at the bottom of our spine, at our tailbone <clears throat> and um, at our perineum. And then they go up from there and the fifth chakra is in our throat. And our throat chakra, each of these wheels or vortexes of energy, they symbolize different, uh, different qualities. And I won't go through all of them right now because the point is to talk about this one. The fifth chakra, the throat chakra, is all about creativity and expression and speaking our truth and connection to others across time and space. I like to say that our voice is our longest limb. It's literally astonishing that I'm talking to you right now sitting in this apartment in Brooklyn and you guys are all over the world and I'm picturing you know, little energy spokes that are going to all of you. So our voice connects us to people. Now our voice also can get us very out of balance if we're using it in its shadow form, if we're lying. And lying isn't necessarily just saying something that's not true, like the sky is red. It also can be not speaking our truth. So I bring this up because I think we're living in this moment where all of us collectively are having a reckoning with what it means to speak our truth, with, with what it means to live in alignment with our truth, with what it means to free our voice and free our throat chakra. And if we tap into the energy of this and free our voices, we not only liberate ourselves, but we actually liberate everyone around us who needs to hear our message. If you're hearing me say this right now, and it's, <clears throat> pardon me, and it's uh, kicking up mucus on my vocal folds. If you're hearing me say this right now, and it's liberating you, then you in turn could do the same thing for other people, right? So our throat chakra is this quality of liberation. And right now that's out of balance. So I want to say this to say that if you are here showing up to work on your voice, you're doing something very powerful, not just for yourself, but the whole collective. Now, I'll just share a little bit more about, for me, how this has shown up, which is one way that I know my throat chakra went out of balance is this experience that I had when I was 21 years old. It was 14 years ago. I was a senior in college at the University of Southern California. I was singing in an acapella group. I was performing in musicals and other theater stuff. And I was actually also drinking a fair amount of alcohol in the evenings because it was my final semester of college and I thought I should enjoy it. And I thought that was the way I was supposed to enjoy it. So all of this compiled to one morning, it was February 4th, 2007. I woke up at the end of an acapella retreat and I had no voice. It felt like there were shards of glass in my throat. It hurt to swallow. It was really hard to talk. I definitely couldn't sing. It was bad news. I had to go to a um, laryngologist that week to have my vocal folds scoped. And the thing is, they said to me, everything looks fine. They said, there are definitely signs of vocal trauma, but you don't have any obvious like polyps or lesions or nodes or anything. So this was very mysterious. I did not get answers right away. It took me many years before I figured out that what had happened was a vocal hemorrhage. So my vocal folds bled, severe onset of acid reflux. So it, the acid essentially splashes up onto the vocal folds and can irritate them. And also, and these are the words I didn't hear until seven years after this happened, I had muscle tension dysphonia. Muscle tension dysphonia is a fancy way of saying, it's the clinical way of saying that muscle tension is clamping down on your voice and causing it to be hard to make sound. Now, I realize that there were many years leading up to that moment where I was pushing, forcing, overusing, abusing my voice. So of course the muscle tension was accumulating to the point that it went, I'm done, right? And the process of untangling this in the 14 years since it happened has been very gradual as well and has been step by step. So one of the ways that my throat chakra being out of balance is uh, has manifested is I literally had this experience, this like whole vocal health experience. I can see in the chat box that some of you are um, relating to it. 
And another way that it manifests in my life is that sometimes I get really nervous to talk about the spiritual aspects of my practice. So I thought it would be a good edge today to let you guys know I had an Akashic Records reading. You may relate that it can be really scary to talk about those parts of ourselves that we find a little bit uh, less mainstream, a little bit more like woo woo out there potentially. So that can be a way that my throat ch chakra gets blocked is that I don't necessarily wanna sh share what's like really going on in here or I don't speak my truth, or I find myself not being able to ask for what I need or want. Anyone, anyone agree with that? I would love to see in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. So these are big ways that throat chakra imbalance manifests. I'm seeing tons and tons of yeses. Just for those of you watching later who can't see the chat box, there are tons and tons of yeses. Yeah, so you're not alone in this. So I, I share my story to say, if you have anything happening on any of these levels, on a physical level, if you're having voice loss, loss issues, vocal fatigue issues, hoarseness, if you just heard the words um, muscle tension, dysphonia, MTD for the first time, and you're like, oh my goodness, there's language for what I'm dealing with, I get you. All of that can happen on the physical level. On the mental level that we're gonna to address today, you've gotta to understand what was going on so you can change it. We can't, we can't change what we don't have an awareness of. On the emotional level, we need to be able to speak our truth, let what wants to come out of us up and out. And on a spiritual level, we've gotta live in alignment with who we really are. If we don't, we're gonna start feeling bleh, right? Um, another way to say this too is um, just to go back to the throat chakra. The Sanskrit word for this chakra is Vishuddha. And Vishuddha means purity. So when we let things up and out of us through the pathway that is our voice, we purify ourselves and those around us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Speak truth. Snaps all around the planet, yes? Okay. So that is what I wanted to share with you about my backstory so you know who I am, so you get a good pep talk about why this is important and why I'm so glad you're here. And now let's go ahead and dive into some learning. And it is indeed Deepak, I agree, it is time to sip some water. Let's do it, okay. So I'll talk more about release your voice class later on. Like I said, many of you on the line, I'm even seeing some of you on the line right now who have taken the class already. And you guys know that in release your voice class every year, I kind of have a different angle about my way in. And right now, something that I've been thinking about a lot is how our voice starts on a cellular level, how our voice starts in our cells. That's where the impulse comes from. So let's go to our cells right now to understand where we're at, how we feel, to do a check-in, to arrive here in this moment today. Okay. Go ahead and sit up tall and close your eyes if you are able to do so safely where you are. And allow yourself to start scanning through your body, paying attention to sensations. What is the strongest sensation you feel in your body right now? What is the strongest sensation, the loudest sensation you feel in your body right now? When you find it, just notice it and sit with it. Breathe with it. You don't have to change it, just let it be there. And next, ask yourself, why do I think I'm feeling the sensation? What is the stimulus that is causing me to feel this sensation? Try to come up with a very simple cause statement in your mind. It can just be, well, I'm tense. Something like that. As you're noticing all of this, follow your line of thinking and ask yourself, what are my emotions about noticing everything I'm noticing right now? And be honest, if any of your emotions are the quote unquote bad ones, that's okay. Anger, frustration, sadness, shame, vulnerability. And you can also feel good too, that's an option. 
And then finally ask yourself, do I have anything that I want related to everything I'm noticing? Is there anything I desire? Good. Go ahead and do anything with your body that you might need to do if the desire came in as a movement and wiggle your fingers and your toes and stretch in a way that feels good to you. Blow through your lips. I remember someone uh, before the class has asked the question about blowing through your lips. It's a great thing to do. Blow through your lips. And go ahead and come back to your waking awareness and your screen. Let your eyes blink open and focus again. So uh, thank you, Christian, you put into the chat box what those questions were. This is actually the voice body connection process. Some of you have listened to my Find Your Voice, Speak Your Truth podcast. You may have heard me talk about that in my community. Uh, so this is a process that we go through where we check in. What are your sensations? What do you think is the stimulus that's led to those sensations? What are your emotions about notice, noticing this and what are your desires? All of this gives us a lot of information about our truth in an embodied way so that we can share it with other people. So I'm gonna actually keep an eye on the chat right now for a moment. I wasn't doing so before. Go ahead and type in and say how you were feeling. What did you notice in your body? I won't be able to keep an eye on the chat throughout the whole masterclass, but I am looking right now. Tension, anxiety, nervous energy, jaw tension, shoulder tension, tightness in shoulder. Someone said nice and calming, yay. Fidgety awareness, fingers throbbing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bubble in my throat, I think I saw. Yeah, great. Thank you guys for sharing. Thank you for paying attention to yourself. So an overwhelming thing that I do see here as I'm looking at the chat box is that there is a lot of noticing our anxiety, our tightness, our tension. First of all, I wanna acknowledge that in the world we're living in right now, still in the middle of a pandemic nearly a year later, with certainly here in the United States, the governmental shifts that have been going on, the social shifts that have been going on, it makes total sense that a lot of us are living with a certain level of stress and tension. There is a way of approaching understanding our nervous system. Uh, some of you have heard me talk about it if you've been in previous classes with me, it's called polyvagal theory. And polyvagal theory lets us know when it what it feels like when we're up in like the, the best version of our nervous system where we feel calm and connected and we can stay and play is sometimes the nickname for this. It's the ventral vagal way of being is the official terminology of it. And then sometimes we get knocked down into sympathetic nervous system activation into fight or flight is the nickname for it. Heart beats fast, chest starts heaving, pupils dilate, sweat glands activate, all of these things. That's really useful if we're dealing with an acute episode of stress, like a saber-toothed tiger leaping across the tundra towards us. But it is not necessarily useful to maintain that level of stress in our everyday lives. So make no mistake, a huge part of having a healthy voice is learning to regulate your entire nervous system, is learning to be able to become embodied in a way that you can bring yourself into a state where you can come back up to that stay and play easy ventral vagal mode. Sandra, I just saw that you wrote, I'm in fight or flight mode 24 seven. I get it. I get it. I'm in flight or flight mode a lot too, honestly. And it's kind of shocking. This is, I think, maybe one of the first times I've done a masterclass where with all of the study I've been doing about this, I'm not as in fight or flight mode as I used to be. I've noticed that as I've been watching back my old stuff. So fight or flight mode is a really, really easy place for us to get stuck. And we're gonna go back into our cellular, cellular awareness right now. I'm gonna offer this to you. If you get nothing else from the masterclass today, and I hope you get lots, but if you get nothing else, I want you to remember the technique we're about to do. Tapping into our cellular breathing is what it's called. This is a practice from body mind centering so that you can bring yourself back into that stay and play back into that regulated state, okay? Cool. You'll notice many times during the masterclass, by the way, that I'll go back and forth between open your eyes, let's talk about this cognitively, let's feed our left brain, and then we're gonna go back into experiential into right brain mode, okay? So let's go back into right brain mode. So bring yourself back to that place where you are paying attention to your body. 
ask yourself, is that sensation that I noticed before still here? If it is, great. I want you to go there and pay attention to it again. If it's not, choose a new sensation to pay attention to. Now, in whatever area of your body you've zeroed in on, I want you to imagine, you can even visualize in your mind's eye, all of the cells, the billions of cells that are in that corner of your body. Now, those cells of your body, they don't breathe the same way our human body breathes. They don't breathe in a respiratory manner where air comes in and out of the lungs, but they do breathe in the sense that they receive nourishment and they let go of what they no longer need. These cells breathe on a cellular level through their semi-permeable membrane. In every moment, there is nourishment flowing in through that membrane into the cell. And there is excrement flowing out of the cell into the interstitial fluid of your body. And then that can be scooped up by the bloodstream, can be carried out through the kidneys, through the liver, through the digestive tract. In every moment in this area of your body that maybe doesn't feel great right now, there's still so much regeneration, so much renewal, so much nourishment, so much breathing happening. Can you imagine that nourishment flows in through the cell walls? The cell retains what it needs. It sends out what it doesn't want or need anymore. And it never takes in what it doesn't want or need. Now expand your awareness to your whole body. And your whole body is made up of trillions of cells. Can you activate just through your awareness and your thinking this level of cellular breathing throughout your entire body? Can you feel the vibration of the fact that every cell is taking in, sending out, nourishing itself, relieving itself, Can you feel through all of this, the flow of blood through your veins and arteries, your heartbeat? The movement of your breathing. Can you let yourself be fully present in every cell of your body from your toes to the tip of your head? And from this place, from this place of full embodiment, can you let out whatever sound wants to come out through your voice? Just let out a sigh, a sound. Ah, <sighs> no one can hear you. Whew, at least no one on the line can hear you. And This is a really juicy, beautiful place to say. And what I'm gonna invite you to do is when you're ready, you don't need to leave this place, take it with you, wiggle your fingers and your toes. We're gonna to bat our eyes open again, but can you stay fully embodied while you start to take in the outside world as well? Hmm. Yeah, and this, brings us into a really balanced state. I felt it in my whole body, you say to say, awesome, awesome. So we call that cellular breathing. And there are many techniques to bring us into a state of regulation, into a state of presence, into a state of being able to 
connect easily with the world around us and also feel our own internal experience at the same time. And if this one was a good gateway for you, then I encourage you to think into those cells on a daily basis, feel your whole body fill up with your energy. Beautiful. And I'm seeing Jennifer said, my jaw tension already released, amazing. And then we'll do some stuff for it, but this is, that's beautiful. This is the mechanics. Where we're starting right now is the mechanics underneath which, from which we can do any tension release work on our voice or a specific area of our body. Why is this? Well, because if we're just diving back in to address tension from that state of stress and fatigue and, oh my God, I have to get, I have to fix this. I have to make this better. Then we're actually just going to be perpetuating the very thing that we're trying to change. Einstein said, you cannot change, you cannot solve a problem at the level it was created, right? So what we just did is we needed to go to a different nervous system state first before we do this work. Okay. Gorgeous. I know there's lots happening in the chat box. Okay. So I'm going to feed your left brain again. I would like you to think of your voice, and I'm going to give you a visual for this just for funsies, because why not? I would like you to think of your voice like a garden hose. <laughs> okay. This is a metaphor. Tension release work is like untangling a garden hose. Now I'll, I'll click off of this image because you got it. But generally a garden hose is, you know, plugged into the spigot on the wall or the outside of the building. And then it runs to wherever the plants are that we're going to water. And the way that we use a hose, the way that a hose works is you turn on the hose and then water flows through the hose and you pick up the hose and you point it in the direction of where you're trying to water things. Because of course, if you don't point it in the right direction, it won't go there. And you know how you do that thing where you put your thumb over the end of the hose sometimes to make it spray. So that's essentially how we use a hose, right? Well, our voice is very similar. With our voice, we turn on using our breath support. That is our power source. That's what starts the flow of the voice. The water flowing through the hose is like our voice kind of metaphorically flowing through a channel. It's not exactly how it happens in our body, but it's a nice metaphor. Resonance, the way we shape our vocal tract up at the top is like pointing the hose in whatever direction we want to point the hose. And articulation is like shaping the very end of the hose so that the spray comes out in different ways. And then we accumulate those different articulatory shapes into speech and language, right? Now, and I can see a couple of you are already thinking about this in the chat box. If there is a tangle in the hose, what do you need to do? You need to go and untangle the hose, right? But if you don't untangle the hose, because let's say you don't know how to untangle the hose or you weren't paying attention or you can't tell where the tangle is, then the next most practical thing to do is to turn the hose off so it doesn't eventually explode, right? And that is actually very much what we often do when we get muscle tension in our voice. We get a tangle in the hose somewhere up here. And then we don't know how to untangle the hose. So we just turn the so-called water off. We turn off our breath support and then we're not using breath support. And now we're just recapitulating the issue because we don't have a power source for our voice. So we're gonna push even more. And this is how we wind ourselves into a tangled ball of tension. And then we even do something else. We go to the middle of the hose. This is again, the metaphor language. We go to the middle of the hose and we start squeezing the middle of the hose. Cause we're like, there's gotta be some water in there. I'm just gonna like squirt it, try to get it through. But that's actually very ineffective. What we wanna do is turn back on the hose, right? These are the mechanics by which it's very likely that your voice has gotten a bit tangled. You have like a teeny bit left and you're just trying to squeeze it out and you're making yourself even tighter and even tenser. Does anyone else? relate to this? I'm seeing some people in the chat box already saying, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this makes sense to you. Yeah. So what I want to talk about next is something actually quite practical, which is how do we turn back on the hose? And when we talk more about the structure of release your voice class later on, you'll see that this is where I always go in the next part of a healthy voice curriculum, because yes, we may think that we need to fix everything up here. And we always think about our voices, our larynx and our vocal folds, 
But if we don't have the flow of energy coming from underneath it, then nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna, it's not gonna get better. Okay, so how does breath support work? So breath support works a lot of different ways depending upon what you're doing. Breathing is something that we do to keep ourselves alive. So there are lots of different ways to breathe. You can breathe through your nose, you can breathe through your mouth, you can breathe in a long breath, you can breathe slow. All of that is good. There's no right way to breathe. The right way to breathe is the way that's keeping you alive right now. But there is a way of breathing in order to sustain voicing, either spoken or singing, that is a helpful pattern for support. And we call that breath support, right? Because actually speaking or singing is a very interesting thing. It's very different than just sitting around breathing when you're not doing anything. I'm doing a long exhalation and I'm sustaining sound on that exhalation. It's actually very uh, different than the pattern of how I breathe when I sleep, for instance. So if there's gonna be a long exhalation that needs to be supported, then what do we want the inhalation to be? We want it to be easy. We want it to be free. Now, if we were all in a big room together, all 606 of us, and I said to you, okay, everyone, breathe. What would you do with your body? Breathe in and get taller and get tenser. Is that true? Is that what you did? That's what I've seen many, many, many people do over the course of time. Yeah, and breathe through your nose. That's what I've seen lots of rooms of people do. Yeah, so what if we breathe out when I tell you to breathe, okay? Go ahead and breathe out. <sighs> breathe out through your mouth. You can shape it, that's fine. And then notice after you breathed out through your mouth, let the next breath just come in easily and see what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Let's do it again. Breathe out through your mouth. And then pause and then let go, let the next breath come in, see what it feels like. Mm hmm We're gonna do it one more time. Breathe out. Pause at the bottom of your breath. And how does the next breath feel when it comes in? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing tummy expands. My shoulders don't go off. My chest goes out instead. It feels much easier. It feels natural. It feels like it's coming from my belly. It feels spacious. You feel your diaphragm. Gorgeous. Expansive, I see. Okay. So this is the foundation of the pattern that we want for speaking. Because think about it. Speaking or singing is a long exhalation where the work is happening on the exhalation. So we want the inhalation to be free and easy. What we want to practice if we're going to have a healthy voice is allowing ourselves to do the work on the exhalation and release on the inhalation. And specifically the work on the exhalation ideally comes from the low belly, from the low abdominal wall of muscles below the belly button. Now, why is this? I'll give you another metaphor. <clears throat> Think of your voice like a toothpaste tube. If you squeeze it from the bottom, all of the toothpaste goes up and out in a useful direction. But if you squeeze a toothpaste tube in the middle, some of the toothpaste goes up and out in the way that you want it to go, but some of it goes down. And that toothpaste that goes down gets stuck until we do more work. We don't wanna to have to do more work. We wanna squeeze from the bottom in the first place. So put your hands, I'm gonna stand up for a second so I can show you exactly where I mean. This is my belly button right here. Put your thumbs at your belly button and your hands, I'll step back so you can see me better. Put your hands on your low belly, quite low. Like literally my pinkies are above my pubic bone. Mm -hmm. Put your hands there for a moment. Okay, so on the exhalation, you're gonna draw your low belly in. This might remind you of Pilates. It's drawing in your core muscles. This might be a little bit more exaggerated than we're always gonna do, but we're exaggerating it for the sake of exercise. Draw your low belly in, and you're going to make a sound with your voice as well so that we can try to connect this whole process. Make an SH sound as you draw your low belly in. Here we go. And then let your belly go all in one motion. Just let it release. You can keep your hands there to help you draw your low belly in, make an SH sound. 
let it go, let the breath come in. Same way that you let the easy breath come in before. Draw your low belly in, make a SH sound. Let it go, let the breath come in. One more time, draw the low belly in, make an SH sound. Let it go, let the breath come in. Good. I'm gonna stand up for a second and take a step back so I can demonstrate for you guys what this looks like. Yeah, I'm seeing some wows. Okay, cool. So in my belly, I'm gonna turn sideways. What this looks like is shh, let it go. Shh, let it go. Shh, let it go. And part of the reason I wanna stand up and show you this is because what we often see in bodies that are doing unoptimal breath support for speaking and singing is we see a collapsing of the chest. So it looks something like this. If your body is working all up and down its central column, instead of being able to activate from, by the way, this is the second chakra zone, from the second chakra zone, then this is gonna be a game changer for you to learn this technique, okay? Okay, I want you to practice it and practice connecting it to your voice. Okay, putting my microphone back in. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys can hear me again on, on the, yeah, I think it switched over just fine. Okay, we're gonna move up the vocal tract. We're on our journey still. Okay, so again, there's lots of science to explain this, but there is air that travels up through the windpipe, through the vocal folds, and as it accelerates through the vocal folds, it sucks them together. Let me say that again, because it's very important. The air sucks the vocal folds together. The muscles do not make the vocal folds come together. If they do, it's a different type of sound. In easy full phonation, the air is the power source that draws the vocal folds together in order to have them start vibrating, okay? I'm going to click over in just one second. I wanna warn you for anyone who has a little bit of heebie-jeebies about seeing um, images of the inside of the body, I'm gonna show you pictures of vocal folds, okay? Cover your eyes right now if you can't handle it, but I want you to see what this looks like, okay? So I'll scroll down here. Your vocal folds look like this. On the left side, you are looking at a pair of vocal folds that is closed. They're probably vibrating and we're just getting a picture in a very specific moment of the moment of closure. And then they're gonna open very quickly, not all the way, not as wide as you see on the right. On the right, you're seeing them open wide enough to breathe. There's a, uh, position halfway between these two positions called approximation, which is the place that we want the vocal folds to come to, to be close enough to start vibrating, to be incited by the flow of air. So there is closed either fully or phonating on the left, and there is open and breathing on the right. And just so you know, too, just to situate, you're looking down at the vocal cords right now, the front of this person's body is at the bottom of the screen. That's their epiglottis, which covers the uh, which covers the larynx and the whole voice box. And at the back, where you see those kind of bulb-like things, those are the arytenoid cartilages that rotate to open and close the vocal folds. Okay, take take this in. Have you seen this before? I'm sure some of you have seen it before, and some of you have not. Okay, cool. You just saw some vocal folds. Now. What do you need to know about the vocal folds? So first of all, we definitely wanna remember that the vocal folds get set into motion by the breath support. But there's a couple things that I promised you I would talk about on this uh, masterclass, which is that lubrication obviously is very important for the vocal folds. Now, drinking water is wonderful. I will do it right now to demonstrate how important it is, but also, the vocal folds have this mucosal layer on the outside of them. They have the lamina propria. The lamina propria on the very outside layer of the vocal folds, that actually is not going to get lubricated very quickly through drinking water. Why? Because the water goes down the food pipe, not down the windpipe. Thank goodness we would choke. So the thing that's going to lubricate your vocal folds the fastest is to 
steam, to breathe vapor or steam. You can do this by boiling a pot of water, taking a towel to kind of catch the steam and just doing it old school style. That's how I like to do it. You can buy a little uh, facial steamer at the drugstore. Uh, now people are very fancy and they buy these nebulizers and you could actually, I mean, I guess in COVID times, you'd have to like have the nebulizer and your mask. I don't know if that would work very well, but you can, um, you can have a neb nebulizer that straps onto your face. The best way to lubricate your vocal folds, and it's very important to lubricate your vocal folds, is through vapor. And Michael, exactly, that's brilliant. That's why we sing so well in the shower. That and the shower also has amazing acoustical resonant properties. So it's just amazing on all the levels. Um, good, okay, so I wanted to be sure that I said, my top tip for when you're feeling vocally fatigued, when you're having hoarseness, uh, I actually just arrived back in New York City and I'm surrounded by radiators now, so I'm feeling super dry. My top tip is to steam your voice. That's gonna lubricate your vocal folds faster than anything else. Keep drinking water as well, but lubricate through steam. Now, the other thing I wanted to share is I talked about how I would share restorative techniques with you that are really, really helpful for your voice. So a couple things to understand about the vocal cords. I'm gonna kind of make them with my fingers right now here. So when they are a little bit more slack, it's hard to demo this with my fingers, but when they're a little bit more slack, when they're not stretched out, when they're their shortest, then we are low in our pitch range. When they stretch out, we are high in our pitch range, okay? So when we go up and down in pitch, we're going like this, we're relaxing and stretching them. And the way we're actually doing that, by the way, is through tilting of the cartilage. So one thing that I like to think of as the hamstring stretch for your vocal cords is gently humming up and down really gently and easily on a, on a pitch, so on different pitches and humming specifically also because the lips are closed when you're humming. So it becomes a very internal gentle sound. Now, I talked about the vocal tract a little bit before. The vocal tract is the tube that goes from the level of your vocal folds where the sound waves are being chopped up, right, by the vocal folds. And there's vibration that travels through your throat and it curves around and it comes through your mouth and through your nose, often just through your mouth, but also through your nose. It's a two-pronged tube, our vocal tract. If we are humming, and we don't have any squeezing or dampening of tension along the tube, then we will feel the vibration of the hum on our lips. So humming is also a wonderful diagnostic for if you are producing sound with the greatest ease. And with that, I would like you to put your fingers like this in the air. And you're going to hum while going gently up and down in pitch and your hands can kind of guide you about where you're going. Ready? Here we go. Pause for a second, ask yourself, am I feeling a buzz on my lips? If you're not, let go of the up and down in pitch for a moment. And just see if you can find a hum that buzzes your lips. Hmm. 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 And once you've found that really easy hum, you're gonna have to use the breath support that we talked about before. Then go around again, up and down in pitch. Just saw the best comment in the chat box. Bertha, you say it sounds like whales singing. Sorry, I'm a biologist. Whales must be stretching their vocal folds as well. Mm -hmm. It could be normal for an ear to pop, Valerie, because um, the throat, the reason they're called ear, nose, and throat doctors is the ear and the nose and the throat is all one big tube. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel like you're Dory from Finding Nemo right now. Okay, so a review, what is this humming for? It teaches us a couple things. One, if we can feel the buzz on our lips while we're humming, then we know that we aren't squeezing along the vocal tract. We're not, for instance, squeezing in the throat. 
in the shoulders, in the neck, in the jaw, in the tongue. We're gonna to come to these places in just a moment. And second, when we go up and down and pitch, we're stretching and releasing the vocal folds. Mm -hmm. So let's do it just a little bit more. And if you can't feel the buzzing, get curious about that. Get curious about whether you can find it. It might take some time. You can even put your fingers on your lips. Are they buzzing? Another thing to say about it too is that it might be subtler than what you're looking for. So feel free to feel into subtlety. Yeah. Okay, beautiful, you guys. We're gonna use this as a diagnostic as we untangle our hoses just a little bit, okay? So here are some tension release exercises we can do. Start by interlacing your hands like this and letting your thumbs hang down. And then bring your hands around to the back of your neck. I'm gonna turn around for a second so you can see. I'm gonna press my thumbs in right below my occipital ridge, actually right, really right below the, the whole occiput. So into the suboccipital muscles there below your skull. Gently press in with your, uh, with your thumbs and then rock up and down with your head. Mm -hmm. Good. Breathe and actually, if you want to hum while you're doing this, you can, but actually let's go back. We'll go back and forth between humming and not humming because we're going to use it as a diagnostic now in a moment. Go ahead and switch and go side to side with your head here. Yeah, these muscles might be super tender. Your suboccipital muscles, if they have been overworking to hold up your head, it's going to change the orientation of all the musculature in your upper body around your vocal tract and it can change the resonance of your voice. It can make you vocally fatigued. So we're gonna release here first. Good, go ahead and pull your hands away. Nod your head up and down and side to side. And now try humming and see if it's any easier. Hmm. Have you freed up any energy? Yeah. Uh, I'll demonstrate one more time so you can see, and I'm gonna pull up my hair. So my, my thumbs are basically right below my hairline. You guys can see there? Yeah, my thumbs are right below my hairline on the suboccipital muscles. Beautiful. Okay, if your voice changed when you released your suboccipital muscles, then this is one of the areas that matters for you. Okay. Okay, let's try our jaw. So let your jaw hang loose. I like to call this Novocaine face. Let your jaw hang loose so that the hinge of your jaw is actually right here, right in front of your ear. Walk your fingers forward underneath your cheekbone and then down so you can feel the sides of your mandible bone. And you can check that you are in the right place by clenching and releasing and see if it feels like your jaw is bulging right there. If it is, that's your masseter muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, now beautiful. Little teeny circles right there, leaving your jaw open and release at least like kind of a finger width between your teeth. Yeah, you're gonna look a little bit, a little bit Novocaine face right now. Breathe, breathe, breathe through the shape. Check in, is your head in alignment over your neck? Uh-huh. Good. You can even come up and massage above your ears. The temporalis muscle up there is also extremely instrumental in terms of clenching the jaw, right? So massage in both those places. And now take a moment. And yeah, I've seen someone say that they only feel bones, but there is up here, there's a very thin layer of muscle. Promise you there's muscle up there. Yeah, good. Go ahead and let that release. Oh, and then close your jaw just a couple times, not wide, just to see how it feels. And now gently bring your lips together and try the hum and see if your voice feels any different here. Mm -hmm. If you have more space, chances are that your voice feels different. Is that true? 
Yeah. If you made more space here, if your jaw tends to clench, then your voice may feel very different. Your sinuses even feel clearer. Wow, amazing. Yeah, gorgeous. Okay, so these are all untangling the hose exercises, you guys, right? If we're talking about our metaphor with the hose. Um, another thing to say, and some of you already commented about it, vibrator. Um, so in, uh, in the Release Your Voice class, and also for the last number of years, I've been teaching something called vibrant voice technique, which is using vibration to release these muscles. And it's very, very valuable. It's created by my uh, mentor and colleague, David Lee. So we can also do these exercises with a vibrator and I teach that in the full class. Um, yeah, I can't catch every single question in the chat box, but this is really great that it's helping you guys release. Let's do one more. You ready for the tongue? Okay, so tongue. You're going to let your tongue be loose on the bottom of your mouth. I'm going to talk in a way that demonstrates that I'm doing it. I'm really not engaging my tongue much for articulation right now. All right. And I want you to stick it out. So it's sitting on your lower lip. Stick it out so it's sitting on your lower lip. And see if you can let it be as floppy as possible. It might start to even like shake a little bit. Uh huh. Good. And now from there, take your thumb underneath your chin. Take your thumbs underneath your chin and massage in little circles. Our tongue, actually keep going while I talk to you. Our tongue has a bunch of root of tongue muscles lower than even what we see. And we're bringing all of that forward and out. We're clearing out the space around our larynx. We're not like literally clearing it out, but we're, we're removing some impact. Mm-hmm. Those words were go ahead and massage that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you're laughing too much, this is hard to do. But try try to be very serious about your tongue massage, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Take it very seriously. Good. Okay. Take it very seriously. And now Close your lips back to your hum. Check in. Mm -hmm. Do I have any more freedom? Do I have any more space in my voice? Uh huh. There's saliva. It can actually hurt a little bit underneath the tongue. Yeah, those muscles can be so tight that they're achy. There's also lymph nodes under there. Um, don't push too hard, guys. I'm not. I'm not advocating for you to hurt yourselves. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, there are a bunch of glands under there, so it's hard to. Uh, it's hard to not be on a gland, but we just do our best, right? It's it, glands are okay to be given a little bit of pressure. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Check in. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize my tongue was so tight. Yep. That's a thing. It's a thing, my friends. Okay. Okay. I'm aware of the time. So I'm going to move us right along because there, we have many more things to do. Q&A we'll get to. We also have a dance party to have. This is very important. So the dance party that we're gonna have is extremely important because there's another element to all of this, which is you notice that we've mostly been sitting up and like being very upright right now with our practice. We don't wanna be perfect about our practice. We also need to disorient ourselves sometimes and trust our body. So we're gonna to get to the dance party in just a minute, but for now, I want you to keep doing these exercises. You can do the back of the neck, you can do your jaw, you can do your tongue while you listen. And I'm gonna share, uh, share with you a little bit about the Release Your Voice class, okay? So keep stretching, keep moving while you listen. So you may be getting the sense that repatterning these things takes time, doesn't it? It really does take time. We can both see immediate change right away, but it also does take time to allow ourselves to make a real difference. We have to reprogram our musculature, reprogram our nervous system. And that's why I created Release Your Voice as a 20 week class so that we can go very deeply into all of the areas we touched on today. And again, to review what we've talked about, we've talked about mindset and the emotional aspects of having vocal challenges. We've talked through some embodiment practices. There are, like I said, are many more we can do. We've talked about breath support. We've done tension release. We could also get even more into working with resonance, articulation, speech, and singing. 
So we go into all of that in Release Your Voice class. And over the course of five months, it starts next week and it goes till the end of June, you're gonna get 30 hours of group instruction. You'll get six hours of spotlight coaching time where you can volunteer to have me watch how your breathing is working, how your voicing is happening and get any personal feedback and ask your individual questions. And by the way, that's a new feature this year in class. For those of you that have been in class before, uh, that was the biggest thing that people were saying is that they wanted more feedback from me. So we've built more time for that in. And there's also access to an amazing, amazing lineup of uh, guest instructors. We have a resident speech language pathologist, Melanie Tapson. She's based in Toronto. We have a re resident laryngologist, Dr. Rena Gupta, who's based in Los Angeles. Our resident singing teacher and sound healer is Stephanie L. Rooker. She's absolutely wonderful. She's my singing teacher. And my collaborator and mentor, David Lee, who created the vibrator stuff that I showed you, vibrant voice technique. And also, this is really exciting, as a special offer to everyone on this call who's listening right now, and Christian has already dropped the link in the chat box, if you sign up for Release Your Voice class in the next 24 hours and you're one of the first six people to sign up, you're going to get a free 30-minute office hours session with me where we can go one-on-one. -on -one. So the link is in the chat. Uh, you can take advantage of it starting literally right now. And I'll just say this isn't any old online course. This is master's level instruction, you guys. Honestly, the stuff we've been doing right now is stuff that I pulled together from a lot of different areas in my 14 years of research. So we pull from theater pedagogy, we pull from singing, we pull from speech science, we pull from yoga, we pull from somatics and body mind centering. There's so much stuff that comes into this course that allows you to change your relationship with your voice from this moment on, truly repattern your nervous system and your musculature so that you can communicate, sing, speak with confidence and ease and share your message and your creativity with the world. It's very, very important that we do this in a methodical way. So we'll go through meth methodically. We'll look at anatomy. We looked a little bit at the vocal folds today, but there's lots more we can look at in terms of muscles, et cetera. And I will also give you home play every week in class. I call it home play. I don't call it homework. It's going to help you both do the exercises that we're talking about every week as we go through the breath support, as we go through the tension release, but it's also going to help you emotionally process your own story about your voice. And when you submit your home play, you'll get personal feedback from the whole voice body connection team. This class is also, I just have to say, absolutely amazing in terms of the support that people in the cohort give to each other. So we have a Facebook group where you can interact if that is um, a place that you wanna be, but we also have a secure class portal. If you don't wanna be on Facebook, if you're not on Facebook, you can interact with people, you can get feedback from class. We also will go into breakout rooms in class sometimes so you can talk to other people who have the same issue as you. One thing I actually wanna share is that so many times over the years when I've spoken to people with these issues, they say, I thought no one else was dealing with this. I And you know, because this has to do with our ability to create and express and connect with other people in the world, but it doesn't have to do with our ability to eat food or to drink water or like the very basic survival things. It's easy to ignore issues like this for a long time, but that affects our confidence, our self-esteem and our identity. And I know that one of the best ways for you to understand how class works is to listen to students rather than listen to me. So I'm going to call up a couple students now who are here on the line, I believe. Christian, do we have Mira? Are you here to share a little bit about your experience with class? I think she might be here. Once Amazing. Maybe. Yep, she's there. She just put it in the chat. Uh, OK. Let's Amazing. See. So Mira, we're going to promote you so we can hear your voice. And what I'm inviting Mira to share is just, you know, what was going on with your voice, Mira, before you came in to release your voice class last year? Uh, Mira is a was a member of 2020. Yep, we can hear you. Great. <laughs> I'm a bit sick. Okay. I hope my voice is clear. Okay. So I'm from Lebanon and uh, I'm a singer. And actually your story resonates a lot with mine because I lost my voice through lar laryngitis in 2017. That year, I had a lot of stress. I was like managing many things on my own, and that affected my singing career. <clears throat> and I was, uh, I didn't, I, I mean, I went to all doctors possible. I did all the tests. No one understood my situation. 
because no one was in my place. When I'm singing on the stage, I cannot really put all my voice out, especially with things that I used to sing for like 10 and 15 years. It was really frustrating. And one night I was <laughs> looking, I was doing some research on Google and I found Elisa. And that year really changed my life. It was 2020. It's, it's when I enrolled in this class and I learned a lot. Uh, I was amazed. And what I want to say as well, that this course, I think that it's something that you should teach in universities because it's really big. You give a lot of information and you go very deep. You're very generous and that's it. <clears throat> Mira, thank you. I'm really glad that you spoke to that. I sometimes call this a university level or a master's level class. Uh, I have taught at universities um, quite a bit in my career. And part of the reason I brought this into the wider world and out of a university format is because there are so many people that we can't reach when we're inside a specific university. So one thing I do actually also want to call attention to is that a lot of voice teachers do take this class and you have my blessing permission to apply everything you learn to passing it on to your students as well. I will be developing a um, instructor training program as well down the line. Uh, but for now, this is the big offering that I have available in terms of vocal health. So actually to speak to that, Jennifer, are you also on the line? We'll call you up Jennifer Cooper, because um, Jennifer is a voice teacher. So you can speak a little bit to using class for your own personal practice and also for working with others. Um, yeah, go ahead and scan for Jennifer, Christian. Yep, I and found her. Perfect, we're calling you up, Jennifer. Mira, thank uh, you so much for sharing your experience. And I'm seeing some questions in the chat. I'm gonna get to them right after we hear from Jennifer. Hello, I'm here, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Um, it's great to be here and be back. Um, my story is a, a little bit different in that uh, about 20 years ago, uh, I was embarking on a big career on the professional opera stage after having received my master's in vocal performance. And I'd done a lot of study as well in um, voice science and anatomy and pedagogy. So I came onto the scene um, really knowing and understanding my voice. And then I encountered a congenital cyst on my left vocal fold, which very abruptly ended my professional opera career. Um, and it took many years for me to get the voice back to the point that I had to reinvent, reinvent my life in a way. Um, to, I do have my voice back and now I sing opera, musical theater, jazz, blues, pop, all kinds of things. And I teach voice as well. But um, what, the course did for me was I certainly go through bouts and periods of time where I feel isolated because when one loses their voice, when it's been their passion in their life, um, even in something as traumatic as that or something as small as just going through allergies for a season and the voice is not perfect all of the time, it's an emotional and mental stress. And having a community to come to and be, um, to relate to, to be accountable to, and to just talk with and share with and exchange with is extraordinarily important. Um, and it's funny, Alyssa, I hadn't even really consciously chosen until about 48 hours ago or so to come back, but it's because of the pandemic, you know, that my performing yeah. life has been ended since last March. And once again, I've been silenced, not by a, a, a pathology, but by an external circumstance. And I realized just how much I enjoyed reconnecting with scientists that you bring on, some of whom I already knew, some of whom I didn't. And I love hearing other people's stories. And I like to share my experience if it helps anyone else. Um, so it's just the connectivity that has been extremely helpful to me. I come into it knowing a lot of the science and having a lot of experience, but I gain a lot from the community aspect of it. So I appreciate that. Mm, Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your story and thank you for sharing your voice with your students and with us. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Yeah. So I figure that's really the best way for you guys to get a sense of the class and you know, that, that can't be underestimated, the importance of having support from a group of people around you. So 
Couple other things, because I was seeing logistical questions that I am indeed getting to answering. So we meet, class meets on Wednesdays from 12 to 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's why we're meeting right now this way. Uh, so class starts at this time next week. If you can't make it live, and I know lots of you are probably watching this afterwards, there's always a significant portion of the cohort, just so you guys know, you don't have to feel guilty, that can't show up live and watches the recordings. That is absolutely fine. It's a great way to participate. You can still be in the Facebook group. You can still be in the course portal talking to people. It's still a fabulous way to be connected. And Australia, I know you guys are asleep right now. I'm sorry, I do my best to do these at a time of the day that most of the world is awake. So um, you have lifetime access to those recordings too. As long as the internet doesn't break, I will never take them away from you. Um, another thing to say, and this one is big, is that Mira and Jennifer both just mentioned, they're repeating the course this year. Once you enroll and release your voice, once you're a student in this class, you get to take it again every subsequent year for free. I'm not going to charge you again. I understand that muscle tension issues are things that don't magically going, go away. I've been dealing with this for 14 years myself. And every time I cover the curriculum that I now teach, every time I go deeper into it, I learn something more. I'm un able to untangle a little bit more. So that is my gift to you is that you can stay in the class and repeat it over and over once you've taken it once. For anyone asking, yes, this, this is also recorded what we're doing right now. You'll, you will be able to access this on an ongoing basis. Let's see, I'm checking my notes just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything else. Yeah, so I think the biggest things to say, uh, we meet on Zoom in uh, Brady Bunch style so that we can all see each other, not webinar format like this. Um, it's okay if you can't make it to class live, you can participate in the community. And also those spotlight sessions, like I said, they happen on Fridays once a month during class. Um, now, of course, I, want, I know a lot of you wanna know about the investment for the course. So the course in, is pay in full, it is $13.99 or you can do five payments of $2.99. And like Mira said, this is like a university level class. So you're getting all of this for much less than you would pay in most universities to take this class. And it's life-changing information that you're gonna be able to come back to and repeat and go to over and over. So I really do my best to price this in a way that you understand that you're making a solid investment of your time, your energy, it's a lot of class to show up for. It's a lot of change to show up for in your own body. And then you get to keep coming back. Um, once again, I just wanna say that the office hours bonus for the first six people that sign up, you will get the office hours bonus, um, which is 30, uh, 30 minutes with me. And yeah, that's $13.99 in full and $2.99, five payments of $2.99. Um, however, Another thing to say is that many people who have been attracted to this class have been, like I said, all over the world. And I know that there are a lot of countries where the scale economically is not the same as it is in westernized countries. So there also is an economic scale scholarship that I offer to uh, people who are in different countries um, that are, I don't like the word developing, but in a country that doesn't have the economic scale that we do in the West. So you can apply to that scholarship on the site as well. I'll let Christian drop the uh, link in the chat box one more time. And there are 10 slots for economic scale scholarships as well. If you have any questions about class, by all means, you can email us at info at voicebodyconnection.com and Christian or I will get back to you. Um, let's see. I'm also gonna let, Susan, are you on the line too? Cause I know you wanted to say something about how class is transformative for you. Um, Christian, will you look for Susan P through the list and see if you can find Susan? Yeah, and, give me one second. Perfect. And I'm just gonna say a couple last things while we're calling up Susan. So who is this class for? This class is for you if your tension is holding you back from singing. This class is for you if you're finding yourself hoarse or fatigued while you're on the phone we're on Zoom all day. I know a lot of us are in those, uh, in those boats. And what I intend for you to have by the end of the 20 week course is a clear understanding of where you hold your personal tension, a set of exercises you can do for yourself on a daily basis to prevent and also restore yourself when you go out of balance, knowledge about when something's abnormal and you actually need to pay attention or go to the doctor, and a plan for how you can grow vocally in your life so you can create and express in the way that you want to. 
Okay. We're going to go to our dance party in just a minute after we hear from Susan. We're going to go into a little bit more curriculum and then we'll go into the Q&A. Okay, I know uh, you guys have lots of questions. Susan, hi, go ahead and uh, share. It, yeah, I, I just had a, a short story about a couple of years ago. I had a speech pathologist friend and I had a couple of lessons and it was, it was all, it was good. And, but she told me, you know, when you start grabbing, your muscles start grabbing and it affects your voice quality, you should just stop. And if you have to quit for the rest of the day, you just stay quiet. And I felt really kind of invalidated by that because it made me feel like there's nothing I can do and I'm like a victim of my own body. <laughs> it was, mm. it didn't make sense. Um, so this turned that around. Mm. Just made my aha moment. Mm. It's just completely changing everything. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for yeah. that dedicated student for your voice and for everyone around you. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to have a dance party. And uh, here is why we're going to have a dance party. And I'll talk about this more in Release Your Voice class as well. Very often when we're trying to protect our neck, our shoulders, our throat, our jaw, our tongue, we think that we need to be perfect, rigid posture people. Do you guys know what I mean? Rigid posture robot? Well, part of really just reorganizing the gentle, small musculature in this part of our body, sometimes we just need to cut loose. We need to change the orientation of our head. You guys can play with this with me while we do it. We need to change the orientation of your head so that it doesn't feel so perfectly aligned because actually we can wind up rigid when we're trying to perfectly align. So I'm gonna turn on a little bit of David Bowie, my friends, okay, for the next couple minutes. And there's a slow section. When we get to the slow section of the song, I want you to do some of the tension release exercises that we practiced. You can come back upright, you can stretch, you can move. But when the song is telling you to dance, I want you to orient your head in a way that you're throwing it around. I'm going to do it. So I'll demonstrate for you so that you don't feel so organized. This is actually a very important part of your vocal development. Okay. So here we go. Speaker on. Boom, boom, boom. And here we go. Stand up. Find some space.
very important to have a dance party. <laughs> nice work. So good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I actually was thinking about someone who might have issues with your joints. You just got to do whatever you can do with the body you got. But I do think it's very important and I'm going to be catching my breath right now. Nice, you guys. Yeah, awesome. So important for us to move our bodies and not get so perfect. It's not about being perfect in order to heal our voice. Yeah, if you felt your neck crack, great, awesome. Okay, good, 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 good. And if you're stiffer than a two by four, I love what you just said, then it's important for you to move. Okay, so I'll let you keep dancing if you want to, but I promised you some, uh, some time to do the Q&A. So we're gonna go into Q&A right now. I'll go a little bit longer. Christian, we can give um, until 1.40 Eastern time for the Q&A, okay? Okay, so sounds good. I will do my best to answer questions in a concise manner. I know I'm not gonna get to everything, but here we go, Q&A time. Christian, take it away. Absolutely. So first question is from Asif. Um, Hey, Alyssa, I'm an SLP from India because of the pandemic. There's a lot of patient load. Um, could you please give some tips for voice health, specifically to SLPs use their voices for five to six hours continually, continuously? Yeah, okay, so I, I mean, honestly, the truth is this can, this can work for everyone who uses their voice continuously for long periods of time. Uh, I just wanna take the opportunity, hi, Asif, and I wanna take the opportunity to shout out all the essential workers who have been working so hard over the past year to make sure that as many of us stay healthy as possible. Um, there's been a lot of conversation in the voice clinical world about how to deal with COVID. And I know that's not exactly your question, but if you are speaking all day long, then if you're getting fatigued, chances are very good that you're doing some version of the, I turned off the spigot on the hose and I'm squeezing instead. So it is in fact the process of making sure that you're using your breath support, that you're releasing any tangles in the hose and that you keep coming back, always keep coming back to the idea of having breath support to speak because if it, another metaphor for it is if we don't bend our knees on the trampoline, we're not gonna be able to jump very high, right? It's very important for us to bend our knees. It's very important for us to have support. I constantly have to come back to reminding myself even in this moment to use support while I'm talking to you and not just to talk up from here, right? We'll obviously get much more into the depth of that process and release your voice class, but that's the overall answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Christian, what's next? Yeah, uh, one of our attendees asks, as a voice actor, uh, what can I do to stop a nasty habit of clearing my throat before starting to speak? And others ask about this as well for speaking and singing. Great, okay, thank you so much for um, amalgamating questions if we have the same question from many people. Great question, and I don't know if you guys just heard, as I was saying, great, my voice had some crickly crackly, like, so generally when our, when our voice, when we're clearing our throat, what we're probably doing, remember those vocal folds that we looked at? What we're probably doing is that there's mucus sitting on top of the vocal folds, and we're kind of trying to bounce that mucus up off the vocal folds by clearing your throat. And the way that we do that is we like kind of bang our vocal folds together. So that is not the most effective way to clear. Um, now, in fairness, if you listened carefully, you heard me do it once or twice or three times on the masterclass today. So I'm not perfect. I'm not asking you to be perfect, but, but there's two things you can do. One is sit with the uncomfortability of the feeling that you feel like you need to clear your throat, but you don't do it. Another is do the humming that we just practiced because that will move your vocal folds in a way that will adjust the mucus. And another, and this is like kind of unscientific, but I like it, a singing teacher taught me at some point, take a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And gargle. Now the truth is that water is not going all the way down on top of your vocal folds, but it is going far enough down in your throat that it's very likely going to kind of reorganize some of the mucus and that can feel good. So those are my tips instead of clearing your throat, but it's really mostly just a 
nervous system habit that we have to reprogram. And great point, Julie says in the chat box, clearing your throat too can be a part of having reflux. Sometimes if there's irritation on the vocal folds from um, silent acid reflux, or it doesn't even need to be silent, you, can, you, you might know it's there. Um, then that may be an indication that you're having reflux issues. And gargling with warm salt water is also great to break up the mucus. Thank you for saying that, Dean. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did see that somebody in the chat and uh, very pertinent to our times. Um, any advice or guidance on singing after having COVID or the effects of COVID on the voice to the best of your knowledge? Yeah, yeah. So I assumed this question would have to get asked today. Um, so I've not had COVID. Um, I, I'm grateful I haven't. I know many of us listening probably have um, contracted it. COVID is, as we understand it, it is something that affects the lungs. Um, it, it, you know, causes um, essentially what I, what I, per, what I perceive would happen is that the lung tissue starts to contract. And lung tissue is actually muscle, it's smooth muscle tissue, but smooth muscle is innervated mostly autonomically, meaning that it's involuntary. It's not necessarily something we can control very voluntarily. But if we start to go through a process of releasing the lungs themselves, uh, I think we can find a lot more of the freedom and ease of breathing that we had before we contracted COVID. So what I would recommend is that cellular breathing exercise that we did at the beginning of the masterclass, I would say do it and focus on your lungs and focus on the regeneration of the cells in your lung tissue. And also we'll talk in class about a concept called yielding, which is the body learning to let go and not always do so much all the time. If you can find a way to yield, to release, to even just lie on your back, you know, in yoga, we call that Shavasana corpse pose. If you can find a way to yield and release through your lung tissue, through your rib cage, I think you're gonna restore a lot of the um, tension that very likely accumulated when you had COVID and were coughing. So that is, that is how I would work with it. Wonderful. Um, multiple folks are asking, um, you know, there's all the talk about, uh, salt water, honey, lemon. Uh, any foods and drinks you recommend before practice or performance or what to avoid before practice or performance? Yeah, I usually get this question in the form of what to avoid. So I was like, oh, that's so interesting. You're asking what I recommend. Um, well, um, something that we'll talk about in class that I study is Ayurveda, which is um, Indian medicine, the approach to eating. I've also studied a lot of different holistic um, ways to approach health. And um, in Ayurveda, and really in basically every um, approach to eating, we talk about the, the major um, qualities of food. So carbohydrates are gonna be sugars, proteins, and then um, fats. And something that certainly in the West, we, uh, through you know, advertising campaigns over the past century, we started to demonize fat, but a healthy raw fat is actually a very, very good thing for our system. In our nervous system, what it does is it actually lubricates the, the myelin, which is the sheath around the, the nerves. And it does that type of thing. It's a lubrication um, element in our body throughout our tissues. So actually something I would recommend is healthy raw fats. Now, what are healthy raw fats? They include avocado, cold pressed oils like um, olive oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil. Um, they would include um, ghee, um, which is uh, clarified butter, or it could be butter. Um, chia seeds are a great source of raw fat. So actually, a lot of us don't eat enough of these type of things. So what I would recommend is like, of course, I'm going to say leafy green vegetables. I'm going to say, you know, go easy on the um, on the carbohydrates, um, go easy on like, uh, if you're eating meat, I do eat meat, um, limit your portions, but making sure that there's healthy raw fats in your body is also a lubricating factor in, in maintaining health. Um, and then uh, chances are a lot of us on the line know the things that are bad, 
um, which would be things that would cause inflammation in the body, like chili, like caffeine, like chocolate, like alcohol, as is part of my story, like um, sometimes citrus um, can be too acidic for the body. It depends on your current balance. Um, like dairy sometimes can uh, cause mucosal um, accumulation. I tend to eat raw dairy personally. Um, so that is my spiel about food. And we'll do at least one whole day in class on um, overall health and food and gut health. Yeah, Kylie asks, when you're in the middle of a performance or even conversation and you feel your vocal cords really tensing up, is there a quick fix in the moment to get you back on track so you don't keep getting worse? Kylie, great question. So I, I, I mentioned this idea of yielding just now and how we're gonna focus on it as a concept in class. We actually did it today a little bit. A moment where we yielded all together is when you let go of your belly and let yourself have that easy breath in. And I know so many of you said that you felt that. So that is an example of letting go to allow something to happen as opposed to making something happen. And in that moment, Kylie, where you feel like a spasm or a tightening or like I'm not in control in this moment, the deepest impulse or, the, or maybe the strongest impulse you might have in that moment is I need to get in control. But in fact, the thing to do is to let your vocal folds, remember when we saw them open, let them open for a moment, let them release, let them turn to a resting position, let them yield so that you can um, allow yourself to restore back to a place where you can do work with ease. So again, when I say that you know this process takes time, it takes time to reprogram that if your body is used to gripping and grabbing, but eventually you will start to find that there's a way through these practices and these exercises to release. Great question. Yeah. Um, Emil asks, in relation to tension, is it possible to become over-focused on speaking without tension to the degree that your muscles become under-activated? Oh, great question. I'll answer that in two ways. Thanks, Emil. Great question. Um, yes. Um, so terminology for being too tense is sometimes called hypertension. You may have heard of that in relationship to um, blood vessels. Um, but there also is a thing that exists in uh, our bodies, which is hypotension or really hypo function of any kind. Hyper is when there's too much of something. Hypo is when there's too little of something. So yes, if you are so de-energized that your vocal folds aren't even, for instance, meeting together to vibrate, then that's obviously going to be a problem for your voice. Um, in, in this class, the people who tend to be drawn to this class and tend to be drawn to this training, uh, most of us tend to share, share an issue of hyperfunction, meaning that at a certain point we've overcompensated in order to uh, try to make something happen. But if we can reset ourselves back, then chances are good we're not going to we're not going to wind up with hypo function. We're not going to wind up doing too little. We're going to wind up like in the middle. And if anyone does have a hypo function issue, uh, these exercises can also bring you into ideal functioning. Now, another aspect of how I want to answer that question is um, just to say that I, I, it's really something I've already said, but we tend, to, uh, us people with, um, you know, the clinical term is muscle tension dysphonia. Us people with muscle tension issues with our voice tend to be type A people, a little bit perfectionist, a little bit like trying to make everything happen perfectly. One of the first things that I say in class is the fervor with which you're trying to solve your problem is the reason you're still stuck. So it's really, really important to start from a place of becoming centered, of embodiment, of letting ourselves reorganize our nervous system so we're not pushing so hard to fix everything because we cannot fix this through pushing. Pushing is the thing that's gotten us tangled in the first place. Okay, yeah, that was the thing I wanted to add. Um, I'm just gonna say for the sake of time, I'm gonna answer one more question right now and then we're gonna officially close the masterclass. And then I'm going to stay on the line for another 10 minutes after that, just for the people who are 
um, who are wanting to hang out and just keep asking questions. Um, I want to be generous about that, but I also want to be respectful of your time. So before I, uh, before I answer this last question, I just want to say again, the first six people, I guess that's six, isn't it? The first six people who enroll and release your voice class today at voicebodyconnection.com slash release your voice. Um, you guys will get 30 minutes of office hours with me to ask me all of your personal questions. I cannot wait to have you in class. If you're watching this recording later, I'm so glad you tuned in wherever you are on the planet. I'm so glad I got to spend this time with you. Please keep taking care of your voice. Please keep cultivating your voice. Your voice matters in this world. We've got to liberate our voices. Okay, pep talk complete. All right, one more question. Yeah, this question is about uh, the uh, the course specifically, and some other folks sure. ask questions that are very related to it. Sure. Wondering if you cover coping with burning of the vocal folds through LPR on the course, or other things such as reflux, um, globus pharyngeus, globus hypericus, things like that in Release Your Voice course. Yeah, great question. In a couple ways, yes. Um, so we are, like I said, going to have a day where we talk about gut health, and we will talk about acid reflux. Um, two of the things we also call on our clinical partners for strongly is to discuss these issues. So uh, Melanie Tapson is the resident speech pathologist on the course. Dr. Rena Gupta is the resident laryngologist and both of them will speak about both um, allopathic clinical interventions for dealing with acid reflux and related issues and also holistic options as well. Okay, amazing. All right, if you guys need to sign off, go ahead and sign off. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. So for those of you watching, thank you so much for being here. And I'll stay on and just answer a couple more questions before we say goodbye. Mwah. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for devoting this time to yourself, your health and your well-being. Take care, see you soon. Hope to see you and release your voice class.